Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on site here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I happen to have a machine here, uh, a company by the name of ESOP came out with this. It's a multi-process machine, and uh, multi-process meaning that it does stick welding and it does MIG welding. Uh, I'm not going to test those two processes. I think my counterpart might do that. So, so I'm here, I'm just going to test out the TIG portion of it. So the first thing that I always do on a machine is I just take a look at it, see how it's built. Uh, do I like it? Do I not like it? Does it look like it's built cheap? You know, and, and I want to know what options come with it, uh, what features are with it, how does it perform? And so it, it came with this sheet right here, and I'm just going to cover the, the TIG portion. Uh, it, it comes with a ground clamp and it comes with a MIG gun and all that, but from a TIG standpoint, this comes with its own torch, and I, I notice that this torch has a valve on it so you can turn your gas on. So there's no solenoid in there on off. So if you're using this, you turn your gas on and it's got a button on here. Typically these torches are not terribly comfortable. Uh, they don't, uh, you know, they'll do an average job. If you're wanting to get into more precise welding, you may want to change this out. But, you know, it, it, it'll do the job. And I notice that it's got a little ball on the end here, a ball socket. So that helps you from a wrist standpoint. But overall, a, a torch like this is pretty bulky. Uh, again, if you're on the farm or if you're doing, uh, you know, jobs in the field, this will probably get you by. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to show you what you get with the machine, how well it works. Uh, it doesn't have high frequency start, so it has lift start. And I'll tell you what, that's critical because uh, I noticed in the instructions here it says that it'll light off at 5 amps. Well, that's, that's saying something. Uh, and you can put in upslope and downslope. That is a very good feature. A lot of the older machines didn't have it. All you did was hit the button and you got whatever you set. So at least we've got some finesse with it. And then later on, we'll get into some advanced techniques. But I just wanted to look at the machine, the size of it. Um, you know, it, these guys have come a long ways. I haven't tested an ESOB in, in ages. So I'm looking at this. I look at the front, the design behind it. Pretty robust. It's got handles. It's got kind of a Mad Max look to it. So uh, uh, pretty pleasing, pretty aesthetically pleasing. So we're going to take a look at what the functions are on it. But this, this machine is... It's called an ESOB EMP215IC. Okay, and that's a multi-process machine. Uh, what does the IC stand for? Inverter Compact. So anyway, it's got a cool name to it as well. This, this torch uh, has the standard 17 components with it. And you've probably watched some of my shows. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of standard 17 components, but I'm going to test it with these components, and then I'm going to show you some of the secrets that you can use to make it more comfortable. So uh, I want to take a look at some of the specs on it. It runs off 115, 220. That's a, that's a positive feature. It weighs about 40 pounds. Uh, that's, that's pretty decent as well. It'll go up to 200 amps. Again, DC only, lift start. Now, there's, there's a feature on here I want to talk about. I'm not terribly fond of the 4T feature. So on any of the machines that you see that see 2T, 4T, 4T is, is a feature that you, you put on for arc start. And the only advantage of it is that if you hit the 4T function, you hit your switch, you let your finger off, and you weld. And then when you finish, you hit it again, and it'll taper off. Well. 2T is about as functional, as easy to do as any. And what that means is that you're going to push the finger thing here. You're going to do a lift start. You're going to do your weld because it's going to ramp up to whatever amps that you tell it to. So let's say we ramp it up from 5 to, oh, let's say 100 amps, and we do it in two seconds. We can control that, that ramp time. So we do our welding. When we finish, you let off, and it'll ramp down automatically. So just deal with the 2T 99% of the time. So that's all we're going to show you today is the 2T function. So, uh, you know, with that said, I, I look at uh, some of the other things that come with the machine. It doesn't come with a foot pedal, just so you know, uh, and we'll cover that in a few minutes. But also, I'm going through the instructions here. It's got a, a, an argon regulator, and it's not the style that I prefer. It'll do the job. It'll work. 
but I like to have the sight pipe, and you guys have seen me use that over and over again because it's got a very fine adjustment, and you can adjust and see exactly where you're at on your argon. When you get into the dual uh, regulator like this, it's not quite as accurate. So uh, it, it's okay, it's functional, but let's just call it okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go around the machine and uh, see how intuitive it is. How easy is it to set up? But again, I'm only gonna address the TIG functions on it. Okay, the switch is on the back. When I turn it on, screen comes on. It's setting, it'll take a few seconds. Okay, so I'm, I'm in the, uh, let's call it the function mode, and you can see all these different cartoons. Well, I'm going to try to find a cartoon that looks like TIG, and it says lift TIG on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the button, and it tells me that uh, I'm, I'm into TIG now. Yeah, it's just that simple. Now, we got two knobs here. Now, the amperage knob would become important in a few minutes. The voltage, it doesn't play a role in our TIG. So, uh, I'm going to scroll through here, and you can see that's a home, as in a house. So, you can hit that, and you can always go back to home. Okay, so I, I want to go up to P, as in parameters. Uh, so, I'm in P, and you can see all these different little cartoons, and you got to kind of scroll left to right. And you can see this one function, and it's going up and down. That's the, the two-step mode. You can see that's two arrows. That's two-step. I'm not even going to get into the four-step mode because I'm not going to use it, and rarely will you be using it. So anyway, so we're... We're in this mode, we're in the two-step mode, and see this little cartoon that says, looks like it says slide going up? Well, that's upslope. That means whenever I start the arc, I need to upslope to the amps that I want to reach in a certain amount of seconds. So upslope isn't quite as critical as the downslope. So I may do something like this. I may put in... one second. Okay, <clears throat> so it's going to upslope in one second. So this machine will light off at 5 amps, and it'll go to whatever I have it set at. Now, let's go ahead and see the little slope, downslope. This one's critical. How slow do you want to re-solidify your puddle? You don't want to leave a crater there, so you may want to put 2 or 3 or even up to 5 seconds on there. So let's just, uh, let's just go ahead and do it. So I'm going to put five seconds in, and you can adjust as you're, as you're doing your project. Decide whether you need three or four or five seconds. So now I'm into downslope, and is, it's accepted it in. I'm, I'm good to go. Okay, now, what do I want for the maximum amperage? Because this thing will light off at five, but in you know, reality, I'm going to weld at about, let's set it at 100 amps. Okay, so I'm going to go from 5 to 100 amps. So I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to set up. I'm going to do some thin materials and some heavy. So, you know, 100 amps, I can do almost an eighth of an inch thick material. So let's do that first, and then I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to do some pretty thin sheet metal. So let me get my gear on, and we'll get started. Okay, so I've, I've got the torch gas on. Turn the knob on. Gas is on. Again, there's no solenoid in this. And you can see I got, uh, I got a good quarter inch stick out here. Tungsten's ground to a point, 332 diameter. I'm just using a 2% thoriated tungsten. Uh, my gas is set at, at 20 CFH. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm running such a long tungsten out there, just so you can see it much more clear. You can probably drop it down to 15 CFH. So I'm, I'm ready to go. Again, this, this torch is a little bit cumbersome. But, you know, because they've got this rotational ball in there, it helps out a lot. So I literally make contact with the plate that I'm about to weld. Then I hit the button, and it activates as soon as I lift. So let's see how well it works. Okay, so it started pretty good. No complaints. 
and I'm only making about a two inch weld here so again this is mild steel I'm just using an ERADS D2 filler 045 diameter okay so I'm getting near the end of my weld so I, I let the slope control take over five seconds and it tapered out actually just tapered out beautifully I didn't have to swirl or anything else it tapered down there's no crater crack um, you know so you can you can do some general fabrication with this without a foot control it just it wasn't a problem at all but this is eighth inch thick material so uh, not terribly finesse but it just tells me that this machine is uh, pretty steady pretty durable now one of the things that I look at and and you should too is what's the price of this machine what do you get with it well we, we describe what you get with it uh, so, you know, we always go on Google or, or some other uh, place that sells these things. We're finding it's selling around $1,400. So, you know, it, it looks like you get a pretty good bang for the buck. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to do a couple, of, uh, a couple of techniques using real thin sheet metal using this torch. So, let me change over real quick and I'll put some, some 16 gauge or thinner together to see if it'll do it. Okay, now I've, I've reset the machine for 45 amps. I've got a, uh, it's about a 16 gauge steel. It's just cold roll steel. I've done nothing more than just wipe it down uh, just to get all, all the oils off of it. So this is where it becomes really sensitive, the arc start, especially lift start. So how good is this lift start? We're gonna find out. Okay, arc initiation on this seemed to be very, very smooth. Hey guys, this episode of Take Time is brought to you by Napotnik Welding Supplies. They're giving away this Aesop Rebel welding machine. For a chance to win this machine, join their email list by clicking this link. Now let's get back to welding. Good stable control. Again, it's just mild steel. Now you can, you know, you can weld 41, 30 chromoly with this and stainlesses and things like that. Okay, so I'm, I've welded just about two inches and I'm just going to taper off. See how well the, the downslope works on this. Okay, so I let my finger off the button. It's downsloping. Beautiful. Okay, so I shut the I shut the gas valve off. You know this is a this is a very stable machine, and and here's what I noticed when I when I started the arc lift start. There's so many different companies that make lift start, and sometimes you leave a little bit of tungsten in there, and at low amps is where you're going to see whether it works well or not. Okay, well I, I started off at 5 amps on this sheet metal here and it started beautifully. So, I, thumbs up. Uh, the guys that got involved in this obviously knew what they were doing. Now, one of the things we talked about is how, how far do you go with this machine? Uh, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to show you some some clusters that you would weld if you're in the bicycle industry or racing industry and this torch is absolutely not the torch you would want. You know, I did a pretty good job in flat, in 1G position, but that's because I could, I could rest my elbow and slide. Now, when you get into out of position, this is not a good torch to have. So I'm going to go ahead and change this machine over and uh, show you some of the tricks of the trade and what you can do with this. So join you in just a minute. Okay, I made a couple of adjustments. Uh, I went ahead and put on my CK9 flex head torch only because I'm going to be doing a cluster or a tubular type product. And whenever you do that, you have to be able to manipulate around and, and you can see the flexibility that I get when I do that. So you just absolutely got to have this. The other thing I, I have is I adjust my argon right here on my regulator and you can see I'm running about 20 CFH. So I'm just doing that so you can see uh, how much fine control you have. Again, this, this is the Mr. TIG 65. 
So uh, I, I recommend that, this torch. Now you can also get this with a valve on it if you want it. You don't have to because you're right here, but uh, in, in either way, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a little wrap around right here and show you that I've got a foot control back here and I'll show it to you in just a minute. But again, I initiate the arc. I'm actually making contact, lift my torch, the arc will start. Yeah, so let's see how precise it is. Okay, I did that wrap around all in one, one swoop. Now, before I finish here, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more test. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna light an arc just on a piece of metal, and I wanna back off and go as low as I possibly can go before the arc extinguishes. So we're gonna get a full view of that, the amperage. This is live amperage that you'll see on the front here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. I'm going to light an arc and then I'm just going to back off very, very slowly. Okay, I'm starting to back off. I don't know what the amps are, but I'm backing off very, very slow. Don't know what my voltage is, but it's got to get, be getting down there pretty low as well. And I continue to back off the pedal, and you'll see the amperage drop and drop and drop and drop. So you can tell me what it is. So anyway, does it pass the test? Absolutely. So you know, just I want to give kudos to the machine, uh, the control on the machine, and I just want to show you that. You can adapt just about any machine and, and, and take it from working good to working great. Now, <clears throat> this is a, a professional foot control and the, the pressure you have to put on it, very, very light. You know, I test these all the time, so this, this one is a very, very good one. Uh, again, it's an option with the machine. Uh, you can look at the footnotes and find out where to get it, but, you know, these typically run a, a couple hundred bucks. So. Uh, any accessories you need with this, just, just contact the guys at Weld.com. Uh, I, I just have to say I'm pretty impressed with the machine. Um, you know, kudos to the guys. Uh, there's always a team involved in designing these machines. So, uh, again, thumbs up. And uh, I want to thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.